All right, guys, back again. Autodesk has kept their releases rolling. Um, so we are going to start uh, with a number of installs. So there's going to be quite a few videos over the next few weeks. Um, as you see, I got some packages to make. Um, these are kind of what the plan is. Um, all the 2026 products for the most part. Um, you can see that I got the installers. I already created the download file from them. And then we'll just package these up, change the PowerShell script, our detection policy, go ahead and create them. Um, so right now we're going to do Revit. Um, so let's grab Revit 2026, put it in our input folder inside the Autodesk folder. So we're going to rename this. So like I said, like I said, I always like to take out the spaces in this. So we got that. Remember 2026 setup.exe. So now we're going to go change our PowerShell script. So, sorry, my dog is going a little crazy in the background. We're going to rename this to Revit. And because pretty much every main app installs the same. I'm not really going to change this. So you're going to see, I'm just going to change it to my folder um, and call the setup.exe with the dash Q. That's all there really is to it with these main apps. Um, there's no hidden like install. Uh, you know, the packages are big. So, um, you know, we're looking at this one is 10 gigs. So this will, you know, zip up a little bit slightly uh, when we package it. But it's a 10 gig download, so that, that does take a little bit of time with your initial ones. All your updates are pretty fast, um, but we're going to test this out. So let's start with our PowerShell, and we're going to run as administrator. So let's go to our C in tune. We're going to need our quotes because there's a space in this. And then we're going to run our script. All right, so we're going to run this. While this is running, um, like I said, Revit, because it's Revit, can sometimes take a while. So um, we're going to let this go. Um, I tried to save a little bit of time for downloading the install files already. But um, all you really do is go to your you know, manage.autodesk.com. Just do the download, not the install, off the website, and you will get um, get all your files. So they will just come down like this. Uh, once you double click on one of these, um, it will start to make the installer package, which is literally these folders of files. Um, and that's all we use. We don't change it. We don't edit it. Could you? Sure. Um, we just don't do that. I do that for uh, keeping it simple. Um, then we can say we're installing exactly what Autodesk is given. It downloads to the computer and runs just like you would if you downloaded it off their website. So you're not changing the the way it installs at all. Um, you know, we've looked at doing some of the custom ones. We don't really have a need. Um, and we'll show dropping I and I files and other files for your users, um, config files, things like that. Uh, in another video, um, but they're a little different uh, than than kind of this. So um, after probably after we do the Revit install, we'll have our BIM managers make an INI file, and then we'll make a INI installer um, that updates for all of our shortcuts, links, things like that. You can see all the processes starting to kick off for the Autodesk installer. So we're just going to let that run. Hopefully this doesn't have a hang in it like um, uh, architecture where it just sat for a couple hours, but you never know with the first releases. So I'm going to mute for a second while this runs. This will take a few few minutes because it's Revit, um, just so you all don't hear any of the crazy background noises, and we'll speed this part up of the video.
All right, so that was actually a lot quicker. You already see the shortcut. Obviously, there's still some stuff running from the installer. Um, but um, this has actually gone faster than I thought it would. But we'll keep the mute on just so you don't have to hear barking. And while that's going, we'll bring up the registry. And just see if it's starting to show up. So, you know, usually we'll find this. What I will say is for the main apps like Revit, where you know it's the first time, uh, I will target the EXE. Um, for something like a Revit update, though, let me show you it. I don't know if I have any of the Revit versions on here, but. Um, for say a Revit update under this key we will find the Autodesk folder you'll see Revit and so in here you will see uh, a folder like um, you know based on the point update um, and I'll show that in another video where we do an update install um, and kind of go from there um, just so you can see it uh, but just knowing that's that's kind of how that runs uh, this is still doing stuff in the background, so we're we're gonna let it go while it finishes up. Cause there's usually a bunch of other pieces needed, and as soon as we kind of get our PowerShell line back, we will go ahead and make the package. Obviously, you don't have to do the test install; just knowing um, the install path works. The reason I like to do it is I've definitely forgotten, you know a name in my file path or a quote and so doing this lets me know that the script will work once it hits there um, with the folder moving the folder this shows me that the whole folder does move um, from you know there to my my C drive <coughs> excuse me Autodesk so you can see that folders already there this is also key for updates because um, your install folder is also where um, like a one or you know one point eight or whatever your update number is will look for that kind of reconfigure um, and you know if it's not there you know sometimes I can hang it up uh, a lot of times if um, you know the nice thing is now that we have these in company portal at any point someone can re-trigger the download and, and put the folder there um, so you always have it kind of at the ready if you need it but we're gonna let that finish up before we start kind of the rest looks like maybe it's winding, well maybe not I say it looked like it was winding down a little bit but Now the other thing to note, which I've said before, is because our install isn't actually running from our input folder, um, we can go ahead and start the package up while this is running. Because this install, even though the PowerShell script started there, first thing it did was copy to the C Autodesk folder and install from there. Um, that, that means you're freed up to kind of make your package, so we're going to do that while that's running. To helps if I remember my full commands. Okay, our input folder.
So, you know, same thing. Input folder um, is, for me, my input Autodesk folder, because uh, that's the one I use for all Autodesk stuff. Um, your PowerShell script is the name of the set of file, and your output folder is, for me, output. Again, these could be named whatever you want. Um, <laughs> so, seen someone name it package, seen someone name it, you know, several other things, but I don't specify catalog folder. If you want to, like I said, feel free to get up to speed on that process, but um, I just find it's not useful. Um, and, you know, away your package goes. So we'll let this run. We'll let both of these kind of run in the meantime. So I'm going to mute again while this runs. All right, so we can see our install finished. We got our PowerShell prompt again. So, you know, here's Revit 2026. See our package is being made. Again, this is a large package, so this will take time. Um, we're talking almost 11 gigs. Um, so, one, make sure you have space, because you don't want to wait for this, but um, this is definitely going to take uh, time uh, to package up. I've seen it take 25, 30 minutes, um, depending on your computer, just to package. And then you have to remember you're uploading, you know, 11 gigs worth of data to Intune. One thing I just want to add there, um, Microsoft used to have a cap at 8 gigs. If you have an old tenant, I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't automatically get upgraded to the 30 when they expanded it. And if you see you're getting stuck with an 8, gigabyte limit on uploads you have to open a ticket with Microsoft support um, they used to do it before for free like you just go in tell them you need a bigger upload package because of Autodesk products and they would make it 30 now the defaults 30 but again if your tenant for some reason is stuck at 8 you just need to open a ticket with Microsoft support to fix that um, that's something we had to do when we first started um, just because the size of Revit um, but I'm going to mute while this package is up, and then we'll go on to our next step. Alright guys, so we're getting closer, probably going to trim some of this dead space um, in the video, but uh, see, you can see how long this package is up, and this isn't a slow machine uh, with 64 gigs of memory, uh, a couple SSDs, um, so just know Revit's a beast, um, and it takes time, but we're getting there, um, we're going to go and start, we're going to go and start creating our app. So we will go to Windows. Go to create. Of course, you know, Intune doesn't want to work well right now. So got this fun. Make our window thirty two. So we're going to go to our output folder. It's not quite done. You see there's no size yet. Oh, did we just finish? Oh, there we go. So this is gonna be the long part, right? So we're gonna we're gonna upload here. Um so we got twenty-six. So as I mentioned before, always like to go into the, the help 
We'll grab the icon. Um, like to go in like the release notes and just kind of grab this stuff for the description. So we got that. Test 2026. We do app categories. Um, just helps to filter. We're gonna go select our image. And we'll add this URL here. You can add, as, there's a few required fields, publisher, description, name, your file. You can add or not add whatever you want, but you know our execution thing will be 2026 install PS1 since we already have our registry key. Um, let's go to our uninstall find. So here you'll see the uninstall string. It's actually right on this one with the X. A lot of the other ones have an I here, which is wrong. Requirements 64 bit, Windows 10 detection for this one because it's the main app and not AutoCAD. We'll do a file and for this we will go here so we'll go into the Revit folder so we're looking for that and we're just going to target the exe. So we want revit.exe and just that it exists. We're going to say OK. There's no dependencies because it's a main app. No supersedence because you probably have multiple versions of Revit and we only make it available for all users. If we had an assigned group, we would add it here for required. It would automatically install. Um, so now comes the long part of it uploading. Um, because this is 11 gigs, um, you could be uploading for 45 minutes to an hour, um, just depending on your upload speed. So keep that in mind. After that, it could be another half an hour to an hour before it's visible in company portal um, to your users. So. Um, it'll take some time, but um, that's all there is to deploying Revit with Intune.